Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Function Junction. My name is Simon Timms. And I'm Eric Fleming. And today we're going to continue our look at durable functions. So if you remember the last time we went through this, we looked at function chaining uh, as a sort of pattern that you could use inside of durable functions. And today we're going to take a look at fan out. Uh, this might also be familiar to people as scatter gather. Uh, so the idea here is that we are going to start up a bunch of tasks and then we're going to wait for them to finish. And when all of the tasks are finished, then uh, we're going to do something else. Um, so in my scenario here, I have uh, a bunch of stuff around getting the weather in some cities. So I've got a list of four cities here. Um, let's add a, another city. I want to be a little bit international. I guess London wasn't good enough for me. Uh, yeah, so we've got five cities now. We're going to fan out, get the weather in all of those cities, and then we're going to use the same Slack notifier that we used in the, the previous version to throw those into a Slack notification for people. Uh, so the, the pattern is pretty simple, and just as with everything in durable functions, we have a, an orchestrator here uh, that's going to be responsible for launching a bunch of tasks. It doesn't do really anything itself, uh, but it is responsible for starting up the tasks. And with durable functions, the way that you start up tasks is effectively to just use the same patterns that you would normally use as if you were doing this on a single machine without durable functions. So we still use all the same like TPL stuff here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by calling out to this weather getter function here, which is pretty simple. Uh, I mean, it just goes and gets the weather from this handy dandy weather API. Uh, I have the token in the environment already. Uh, and it'll go and get all of those cities. It's going to couple them all together and then it's going to do another fan out uh, and it's going to send out all the Slack notifications. So we're only going to see the Slack notifications when all of the weather information has come back to us. Uh, and the way we do that is we're going to build up a list of tasks here. So we just have like a list of tasks here. We add all the tasks that we want, and then we use this helper function called when all, and we're going to wait for all of the tasks to finish. Uh, there is another function that could be used here, which is when any. Uh, and this would change how this works because then it would return only the first one to complete. Uh, so if you had like a bunch of different bits of code that can perform the same functionality, uh, maybe a good example of this would be like looking up, a, well, actually weather forecast is a good example. So we have six different services that we can rely on for weather forecasts. We're going to launch and get information from all of those services simultaneously. And whichever one returns first, we'll assume is right, and we'll just go with that one. So that that's pretty reasonable for something like weather, because a lot of people are taking the same measurements. They probably even have the same source of information locally. Uh, and we can just take the first one that finishes in the hopes of making the interaction faster for our users. But for now, we're going to wait for all of the weather to come back for, for all of these five cities here. Uh, and then when it comes back, we're going to set up the same sort of pattern here. So again, a list of tasks. We're going to loop over all of the forecasts that we got back, add them to a collection here, and then we're going to wait for all of those to, to finish as well. So let's give that a shot here and see what happens. So like you're saying, so this is pretty cool. So, you know, that, that task that went all, I mean, you, this, that's not something obviously just for Azure functions. That is just how you would do it. Uh, you know, normally what if you're writing any type of, uh, you know, asynchronous functionality in any type of C sharp. Yep. That's right. So the, I mean, that's kind of the, the model that durable functions have taken is that they're trying to leverage pre-existing functionality within the framework. Uh, so things feel familiar to people. All right, so here is the HTTP start endpoint, and this just listens in on get some posts, and it'll kick off our durable function here. So we'll send that, and it should return relatively quickly. Uh, so it gives us the ID of the, the orchestration that's kicked off. Uh, and in theory, in the background, that should be running nicely. Now let's switch over here. Oh, boy, there's a lot of red over here. All right, so what did I screw up over here? Uh, it's 
not a valid integer. Okay, so uh, when I set this up, what I did was I went and uh, to the service, pulled uh, a piece of information off of it. So I did a like a, a get off of the service and it returned a bunch of JSON and I pasted that in as JSON in my project, but it looks like uh, something that in my example was an integer is actually a float or a double or something like that. So wind dot degree. So let's go and make a quick change to that. Uh, so I think that was over in the shared project and models where the conditions. Uh, so wind and yeah, right now this is a, an integer. So let's make that a float. So it's like it's friends. And we'll try that again. Uh, so for people who haven't used this functionality, uh, there is this handy dandy little bit in here where you can go edit, paste special, and uh, normally it'll be like paste JSON as classes. And if you have a, a bunch of JSON, it'll just kind of try and extract the schema from that and put it in here. But obviously in my example, the one that I had just didn't happen to have any decimal digits. So it failed, uh, but that should be back up and running again in a moment. Oh, I must have left the other one running. Try it one more time and then we'll, we might have to go and run it on a different port. No, oh, hmm. 7071 is unavailable. All right, so we must have something hanging around on that port. See if we can change that to debug on a different port here. Uh, and I think it said I can pass a dash p. Let's give it. That looks like a good port. Oh, ooh, didn't like that at all. I didn't even see what it said there. I didn't either. Uh, obviously didn't like that port number though. All right. Well, now at least in the intervening time, <laughs> something has timed <laughs> out and has given us that back. Um, so try that again here. Yeah. All right, so things look a little bit bluer, greener this time. Um, oh, so you can see, you were, I was starting to see some messages coming through here about what the weather is like in Denver. And there we go. There's all of our messages right there that we came in. Nice, nicest weather is clearly in Calgary today. <laughs> Should check the weather in Atlanta because it's over 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what Fahrenheit is. <laughs> that just sounds like a made up number in a made up measurement <laughs> system. Uh, so anyway, that that's the idea of fan out and fan in, scatter gather. Uh, so it's pretty simple to do that. Lots and lots of scenarios where you'd want to do this. Um, in our case, we fanned out with what are basically symmetric tasks. So each task we, we send off is the same uh, with only the, the variation being that we have a, a slightly different city. Uh, but you can you can scatter out a million different things. Like uh, we could have scattered out Slack notifications and database updates and, and whatever else and just waited for all of it to, to finish. Uh, so this is yep. a very powerful pattern. And again, it's just nicely implemented using uh, the kind of functionality that's built into the, the C sharp language uh, in terms of using tasks and waiting for them. All right, okay. uh, so that's it for this one that I wanted to cover. Uh, Eagle-eyed watches will notice that we have a few other examples waiting in the wings over here. Uh, so we've got stuff for, for timeout and for external interaction. So we'll probably get back together in a little while and record another one of those. Perfect. Well, thanks everybody for coming out and we'll see you again next time. Bye everyone. Bye.